Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're jumping back into some more Project Architect. So, welcome back to Project Architect. So today, there is a lot that I have planned that is on my to-do list. Uh, we have our project, or our transmutation tablet here. I want to get this bad boy upgraded to a tablet today. So uh, let's do Project E. This thing, we should be able to bump some more EMC by just doing a little bit more mining. We should be able to get ourselves enough EMC to hopefully make ourselves a transmutation tablet. Um, now, this is going to be on my to-do list. I'm going to mark this stuff off. Uh, the transmutation tablet requires a bit of EMC. You can see right here. But luckily, the items that are required are not too bad. So we can pull out a, like a block of diamonds, for example, and this fuel, is, the Mobius fuel and all these fuels are just coal with a Philosopher's Stone. So let's go ahead and take this out and we can go ahead and start the process for which uh, we're going to be making all of this stuff. So as you can see, all I have to do is learn this now, pull some of that out, and I just have to learn just one of each. And that's going to be the process for which I get this tablet. Once I have the tablet, I think my... Uh, my life is going to be a little bit easier as far as uh, progression goes. Um, and then we're going to start working on getting some basic power up with thermal. And then I think work towards uh, ore processing today. So as I'm working towards all of this, I decided, you know what? To get down and back easier from our farm, how about we make this bad boy, which is called the Travel Anchors. Um, basically, it's like a, a rip from uh, Ender.io. Um, I wish there'd be more things ripped from Ender.io, but uh, this is definitely a nice one. I remember this from Ender.io. You're able to just basically use this wand to teleport back and forth. Um, so I should be able to just go ahead and craft it. There we go. And the wand, we just need an Ender Pearl. Did I not save the Ender Pearl? No, I didn't. <laughs> so yeah, this is how I was crafting the Ender Pearl, just like that. I had not saved one yet. So there we go. Awesome. So staff. And these are EMC able as well. So I know a lot of this is like just going back and forth inside the EMC table, but things are really going to change here soon. Let's go ahead and grab two of these. And uh, we'll set one up here on our base. I mean, we can go ahead and set one right here. I think this will be a good spot. I don't know why I'm breaking it with my fist. Um, but by default, like this right here, we can uh, name this home. And now that one's locked and loaded. I even think this lets you, yeah, just like shift right click to teleport. And so you can quickly teleport through places. And I think it even lets you teleport through walls. So that's another nice little thing. Um, so yeah, as soon as I get right down here, I'll just go ahead and place it here and we'll call it mine. And uh, I should be able to Let's see, I see it in the, it says no anchor found, but I can see the anchor. It must be too far away, which is weird. I guess it has to be highlighted. Ah, the range. Okay, so maybe there's a range on it. And I can definitely see that the range is a little too far, but it's still nice to have this tool in our hand. So before I go mining to start building up some ENC, one of the big things that I definitely am going to need is this backpack from Sophisticated Backpacks. So I went ahead and made a base level one and I can throw it in my backpack slot and hit B and I can access it. Of course, to upgrade it is pretty simple, but I just don't want to use my EMC just yet upgrading this backpack when I can save it for later. So at the moment, I am working towards getting myself the uh, the thermal setup. So I just want I basically want a pulverizer and a redstone furnace so that way I can sort of get ore doubling in a more efficient way other than throwing inside my smeltery at the moment. Um, so I have all of these different ores and stuff that I have mined up, but of course I want to help build myself EMC some more. So I would like to double those ores and, uh, get a higher yield. Um, so for that, I'm slowly but surely working on all the auto crafts and, uh, as you can see right here. So I think I have enough for the pulverizer and I believe I can throw these machines in and they're going to hold. Yeah, they're going to retain what they are which is perfect. So if I ever need a redstone furnace, I can always throw it back in here and so on and so forth. I think the only thing I have to be careful about is if there are upgrades inside the machines, because if there are up upgrades inside the machines, I'm almost positive they either get deleted or it becomes a different machine and then you start to build up things in here you probably don't want. Um, but of course you can always delete things over here. 
So with that done, I still need a power source. And I think early on a sterling dynamo, probably going to be one of my best things to go for as I can just throw coal in it. Yeah, this, this is probably gonna be the better way to go. So I want to set up something really discreet. And I think this area is going to be the perfect spot for that. So here's going to be this really, really nice setup. So this is going to be placed down and these are going to both be touching the base of our redstone furnace and pulverizer. And if we remember that the pulverizer should probably go first, so I'm gonna have it setting here. And then right here will be the redstone furnace. I still left myself a little bit of a gap to be able to put the fuel in, but everything else can use barrels. And uh, because we're already using this area in here, barrels are gonna be really nice because we don't have to worry about the spot above them. So just like this, it's a very nice and compact area for the ore doubling. And I can still reach in here to put in the coal and I'm using alchemical coal. Uh, I don't think you have to, I, I don't know if it matters. I think the burn time lasts longer though on alchemical fuel. Um, it says it smelt 32 items, so on and so forth. Uh, but as you can see, this is starting to build up. Now all I have to do is configure this. We'll set this to auto input and output on both. And this one will say input on the top. And then we're gonna use a buffer chest over here to output to, just in case there's some extras that is generated that we don't want going, uh, that we don't want um, to block up our system. Because if it gets stuck in this pulverizer, then it's gonna stop. Uh, so we wanna make sure to allow this to be able to pull and then have this push out to the top. So input here, output over here, and we should be good. So all I gotta do is take all of our ore, and toss it over here and that should start uh, start doing all of its stuff so as you can see all of this should be able to get crushed into its dust counterparts and we're ready to go and it's also going to produce a little bit of byproduct as well but yes this right here is going to hopefully get us jump started with our EMC while I go mining so since I have thermal up I think it'd probably be a good idea to at least get a basic refined storage network set up so that way we don't have the, you know, this whole mess going on. I think we're definitely at that point where we should be able to get this thing up and running and uh, utilize some, side, some kind of simple power at the moment to just power the, uh, the controller. So what all do we need to set this up? Well, we don't need a whole lot. We just need nether quartz. Um, and I, I'm gonna need actually quite a bit of uh, quartz, uh, but we'll be mixing quartz with iron and thankfully, I mean, this is just a pretty simple recipe here. Uh, I believe it is mixed two to one, I think. Or is it two, two quarts to one? Or is it three? Oh my gosh, I can't remember. Is it this like, like this? Now I'm gonna have to look. <laughs> I was close. All right, I was close. It's just because it's a shaped recipe. But there we go. So we have quartz enriched iron. Uh, I can't remember everything, but there we go. So that's one of the main things we're gonna need. We're also gonna need to smelt nether quartz and smelting this down is gonna be pretty straightforward. That is going to give us this, the silicon. So we can go ahead and learn that. And honestly, all of this stuff is gonna be pretty simple to put together because it does have EMC values. Um, one thing though I don't have is slime balls. Is there an interesting way of getting slime balls I don't think I have those yet. Uh, is there a villager? I bet there's a villager that does slime balls. Uh, let's see, can we search? I think we can directly search within JEI and we can find out what actually does. Oh, so right here, there's a villager hunter. So if we search in villager trades and professions, we can go back and find the hunter. And this is what the hunter requires, arrow, leather, and some wood. So leather, arrow, and some logs. Uh, and we can actually head over to our village area and hopefully trade up with this guy so that way we can get some of these items. That's actually gonna be a pretty decent uh, way to go about doing this. And if I remember the hunter, it's actually a pretty nice, pretty nice guy to trade with. So over here in villager land, hopefully, I can get a villager trapped in here. Oh no, this villager is not want to do what I wanted to do. Will you come out? Will you learn something? 
e e honestly, these villagers, man, they are something else. They, like, this one will go in here, like, for example, but, man, I, I guess I gotta wait till nighttime for these guys to go where they want need to go. So, it might have took a little bit of time after I uh, did remove a few of the, uh, the villager outposts, but, uh, look at this. The first trade is slime balls. Um, so, emeralds, and all we have to do, pull out some of those. I did cost quite a bit, though, uh, but this guy is going to have way more than slime balls up his sleeve, for sure. I am definitely looking forward to what this guy offers. Look at this. Spider eyes, and I'm sure, let's see, for some bone, all we gotta do is trade a few bone. Oh, this is gonna, this is gonna take a little bit, yep, to level that up. But still, emeralds, four emeralds for a fermented spider eye. That saves a whole lot of time later on down the road. Wow, so once you level the hunter all the way up to master, you get access to a guest here in Rabbit's Foot for a few emeralds. So I'm definitely gonna be buying a guest here and a Rabbit's Foot. Oh boy, because that can come in handy later on down the road. Uh, so yeah, all the stuff that it offers, I mean, this is really nice. Also, there's an outpost outpost explorer map. Not quite sure where that's gonna lead, but we'll probably take that up that offer up uh, later on down the road. I'm definitely interested in exploring for sure. So as far as setting up the refined storage goes, I am already producing the processors. This is so, so, so simple. So I have all the processors ready to go, and this is just going to allow me to go ahead and pull those processors out now, just like that. And that's, that's what it's all about. Like, this is not meant to be difficult. Plus, if you're uh, looking to get into these mods, like, early on, and you're looking to kind of play with things that you would never really get to later on, uh, this mod pack is, is perfect for that. So, uh, there we go. So, ease of getting into this. Now, as far as crafting the other components go, this is, like, super, super simple. We need a chest. And uh, I think all the fun and complexity is going to be setting up all of the uh, the networks and stuff that we're going to be using with these. Uh, because I plan on eventually having, uh, you know, quarries running and then optimizing and then getting all of the, uh, the stuff where I want it to go. I think that's going to be really fun. So getting this, I need a machine casing. What goes in the middle of the machine casing? Just a piece of stone. So much stone. Okay. So, there we go. Uh, so, drive with the simple machine casing. And then we can go ahead and take that. This is going to get us our basic drive. Um, and there we go. That's our basic disc casing. And this is what's going to hold all of our discs that we end up uh, setting up. And, we, of course, as you can see, we can put like a 64K right away in our uh, drive. It doesn't seem like it's going to be that much. And I think this will be a good like uh, mod for me to kind of experiment with the fluid storage because I don't think I've ever played around with the fluid storage with refined storage. So because of it being as cheap as it is, I think, yeah, I, I should be able to easily do that. All right, next on my list is definitely gonna be like the controller. Let's see, can we go ahead and craft the controller? Yes. So there's the controller. All this stuff, by the way, we can go ahead and teach this to our network. Or our Project E tablet, uh, and then the crafting grid. So this one uh, requires a bit more, but it's still, all of these require that uh, basic machine. Where is it at? Yeah, the machine casing. So let's go ahead and learn this. I gotta. I keep forgetting to have the uh, crafting table open. Um, so there we go. So this is gonna require a construction core uh, that's glowstone, and I believe the other is quartz. So glowstone and quartz, when combined with the basic processor, gets us these two different cores, and these are definitely worth getting our hands on to, for sure, because we're gonna need that for just about everything. Um, and you're wondering, uh, like, why are you building a refined storage system when you have Project E? Uh, the main reason is because I can take things from Project E and I can throw them in here and I can still get things crafted up. Um, so I don't have to always go into my transmutation table. I think that's going to be the eventual plan is to have things hopefully automated enough that I can just have them being constantly pumped into my refined storage system. 
So last but not least is glass. And I think, I think we literally have everything we need to make our, uh, our system here. So there's a basic grid, which I definitely want to learn that. And then the last one, I think it requires a diamond tier processor, which I don't think I taught my system the processors, did I? Yes, I did. But did I teach it the diamond one? I, I don't. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> I thought I taught it all the processors. Uh, all right. So last but not least, uh, we teach it here and that will take our crafting grid. I'll just pull another one out. Eventually, like I said, we're not going to have to worry about that crafting grid because it'll all be ready to go. All right, so the only other thing left to do is to get ourselves some power and I need to make a drive. And where do I want to put this thing? So this is going to be pretty simple to set up. All I have to do is place the controller. I have my access to my Sterling Dynamo down here. All we have to do is pop in a grid and uh, yeah, I'm going to throw in my storage disk. I went ahead and made a 64K. Those are pretty simple to go ahead and scale up. As you can see, they're right here. And uh, last but not least is to give this bad boy power. And to do that, I can just throw in some extra coal here. And that should start to power this up. This is only using five uh, RF per tick or FE per tick. Whereas this is should be producing, yeah, 40. And this isn't even upgraded. So this looks pretty good. And there we go. We have a grid and we can start throwing random items in there. I say random, but the thing is that I, the thing that I really want to be stored in here are some of the basic materials that I, I'll use all the time, like all of our ingots, um, different gear components, things that we're going to need to craft machines like the pulverizer. And it's just going to make life so much easier to have a refine, a simple refined storage system set up. Now, one thing that I do want to do uh, is to dye this orange. I think orange would look or green. I think green. You know what? Let's just do let's do orange. Let's do red. One thing I haven't set up is dyes yet. Red and orange or yellow. Do I have yellow dandelion? Uh, let's see. I know I have. I don't know if I farmed a yellow flower yet. Uh, like a dandelion or uh. I don't think so. We got a white clover. Ooh, you know what? White actually might look good for now. I can always change the color later on. But there we go. Let's teach this white dye. And then I can actually use white on this to change the color. You can't change the color of this, but all your other components can be changed. So yeah, look at that. How cool is that? So now that I have all of this set up, I'm thinking the best or the, the next uh, step in our sort of build here is to, uh, I, I guess, work towards EMC production or at least a basic form of it. Um, now, the way that I would recommend generating EMC early on, of course, you can use a cobblestone generator, which is what I'm going to be doing here, or you can use a basalt generator, which would be e a better, but you're going to, of course, need those resources. Um, but to do this in Project E, we need to set up something like this. We need charcoal. And we need to start ba uh, crafting some basic uh, parts. Actually, I think this is a uh, cobblestone that it needs. Um, so charcoal and cobblestone. And this will actually make a dust. So low covalence dust. And then we'll have uh, iron and redstone will make medium covalence dust. And then diamond and coal will make the high covalence. These things are used to make an alchemical chest. Um, so all I got to do is now store all of this stuff and the alchemical chest and then upgrade the alchemical chest, which by the way, is just a, a decent sized chest. Uh, we're going to turn that into an energy condenser. So the energy condenser is how we are going to automate stuff. So what happens with an energy condenser? Uh, so basically you put items, you select, for example, you select an item that you want to generate up here and then you put the item in. Um, right here that you want to turn it into. And so if the EMC value is high, it'll start to build up and it will produce the item inside the chest. Um, so this could be used for automation in which we could use here. So basically I could just have a cobblestone generator that is filling this up and I can have this set to, uh, for example, a high value 
thing, for example, like this. And if I put, let's say this stone, you can see it's going to start to build up until it reaches that EMC value of 348. And then it'll actually produce one of the pistons and put them in here um, in exchange. And this is automatable. So, like I said, you can hook up pipes to this, and that's how we are going to do that. So, it's not super cheap to get to this point, but that is a thing that we can do. Now, the Igneous Extruder. This bad boy uh, can, can make several different things. So, if we take a look at what it can produce, it can produce stone, basalt, and cobblestone at the moment. So, the basalt is probably the best thing to go for, uh, as it requires soul soil and blue ice. The problem is I don't have any ice, um, nor do I have soul soil. So at the moment, I think just regular cobblestone gin is going to be the best way to go about doing this. Um, now, I also notice that it doesn't auto output. Um, so that's fine. We can go, we can get around that with some pipes. And uh, luckily, we do have a pipes mod. And just like that, we have some item pipes. And as you can see right here, this is the pipe wrench for this mod. Very, very simple to get set up with this. And uh, I think that's going to be all we need right now. Oh, we need a bucket. That's right, we need a bucket of lava and water. Now the way to automate this is going to be fairly simple. Um, down here, I'm going to place the lava and the water. And uh, let's go ahead and remove this temporarily so I can actually see what I'm placing. So right here, I'll put the water place down the igneous extruder, place down the lava, and then cover that lava up. This is gonna automatically, without any upgrades, start producing it at about one every second or so. Uh, very, very slow, but this can be sped up pretty quick uh, once we get into higher tiers of stuff. But just an example, I'm gonna place the chest here, and then we're gonna use our pipe, and the pipe is going to be set to pull from here. And that's going to automatically start filling up. Um, now, we just need to set some sort of EMC valued item in there. Uh, like, by default, we, let's just do this coal, since it's low and we can actually see what we're generating. Notice that's going to empty. And uh, if you want the chest to go faster, I believe the Mark II. Yeah, the Mark II energy condenser goes faster, but it's a lot more expensive. So getting started early on, energy condenser. And right here is my setup for that. And uh, this is gonna be my passive EMC generation source for now. Of course, it will get better over time. And uh, you could always make more. Like early on, if you don't wanna put the upgrades in, you can make more, but uh, I think later on, we're gonna have much nicer setups for EMC gain but it's still gonna probably revolve around the same system. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I know today was a bit shorter and probably flew super fast for you, flew by, but I do need to get some infrastructure sort of built up in order for us to get kind of building with all of the uh, the stuff that I really want. It's gonna cost a lot of EMC. So with, uh, with us not generating EMC, kind of difficult to start building stuff, uh, but that will be coming soon. Be sure to check out and, and look out for that. But of course guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Of course, I do want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that is going to be a huge thanks to Blood Rose 89 Thank you so much for your amazing support. Becoming an absolute boss supporter over on the Discord. Becoming a Discord Premium Diamond member. I do appreciate you. Thank you so much for your amazing support. And of course, guys, if you were interested in joining the Discord, all you got to do is go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect where you can find a vanilla SMP just available for everybody. And I would love for you guys to check that out and join that if you guys would. And of course, guys, be sure to click that subscribe button because we're so close. We're so close. And of course, guys, I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.